Working on electronic equipment has many hazards associated with it that can cause injury and or death. Please do not work on energized equipment unless you take proper precautions. Working on such equipment is done at your own risk and not at the prompting of information from this or any other YouTube channel. Hello and welcome, or welcome back to the Poor Man's Electronics Bench. I am going to go into part two directly without a titled intro, just to expedite things a little bit. Out of all the testing I did on the old capacitors and the new capacitors for comparison, I threw a good variety of capacitance testers at them. I threw a couple of dedicated Chinese value and ESR testers. I threw my new Bryman BM869S meter at them. I threw a liter LCR740 capacitance bridge. I threw a Sprague TOA6, I, and also I tried a, something that I saw another YouTube content uh, creator, Ray Gianelli, use a Dayton Audio DATS v version 3. I never even really knew that it had a, it's got an interesting capacitance function. I'm going to have to go into that later on another video, though, because it's not really up to snuff, I don't think. But out of everything that I found for my testing, I could not really find any direct faults in the old capacitors in the two air conditioning units that I changed them in that really would say you've got to change these now. The, I, I mean, the only thing I can really go by is, let's face it, you've got rust damage is starting to, hit in, is starting to get into this guy, these guys. This one is... 17 years old. I think this unit was installed about 2005, 2006. This capacitor was in service for a little bit more, and as you can see, it's getting to the point where corrosion is getting through the case, and nothing good can become of leaving them in there, I'm sure, but the curious thing is I couldn't find any leakage faults in them. Uh, ESR was comparable between old and new on everything I measured. It just really didn't make a difference no matter how I measured them to the point where I could say, oh, this one's bad, or, you know, it, it didn't, it, it's strange. I mean, these things apparently are built so well and are so durable. At least the older, some of the older ones, this one was rated at three, 370 volts AC, 60 hertz, made in the USA. And even though some of these newer ones are made in, made in Mexico, some are made in the USA, some are made in Mexico, you can spend a little more in research and get ones, get get them made in the USA, and the, you know, they may or may not be a better quality, but this one here, three micros at 370s, also says made in the USA on it, on the bottom there. So it's... One of those things where it, it's the actual physical condition of the capacitor more than anything. And I even went to the point where I was thinking, hey, maybe it's got a leak between the metal ca metallic case and the internal uh, capacitors. And I went through things and two different <clears throat> very high resistance or conductance testers uh, methods I use. They have a uh, my little homebrew giga ohm capacitance leakage tester here as you can see it's got a good good bright LED indicator light on it I can zoom in zoom in a little bit what I'm going to do is go between the case and shut some lights off because it's the lighting of that LED makes a makes a difference to see if there's anything going on see if there's any leakage between the case and the capacitor itself. Well, granted this this indicator was isn't in the first connection position. It's almost like a test for electrolytics. I can short the leads to it. You can see it charges up quick and takes a charge at no leakage. I can reverse it. It does the same thing. In the middle position this is also showing no internal leakage on the new 3 microfarad. 
on the old it shows it oops if you can see it I'll get my big hands out of the way here reverse polarity on it you can see it taking a charge and then once it takes a charge up to the voltage on the connectors it'll indicate a bit of a leakage but not much if any this one's behaving about the same that's about I want to say that's about a giga ohm it's indicating we're a little under but the you know leakage just isn't there on the on the old capacitor compared to the new one it goes down to about the same indicated value on the light and the one thing I did is I was wondering if there was any any type of continuity conductance or resistive continuity between the case or not so I put the tester in the third third level of testing here and this is this indicates probably 40 giga ohms or above for even just touching the leads laying in the desk desk there it's very very sensitive I can even just take one lead and clip it onto the other boot and it's still giving me a continuity indicator so of course I'm going to get well actually see the voltage on this position of the tester is a little higher than the voltage charge on the capacitor a little lower than the voltage charge that's on the capacitor so that's why it's not giving an indication going into the connection on the case though there is very little to no resistive fault indicated on the old one or on the new one I mean on the old one I've got some paint scraped off over here to get a good connection right there and if you can see the LED is just lighting up just a little bit more but it's you know as far as a qualitative measurement there is no direct continuity between the case and the internal capacitors on that old one you can go with the two section one here this one has a little bit better metallic case And as you can see that LED is lit up a little more so it's starting to get a slight bit more of a fault but this is still in the giga ohm range so it's, it's it would be nothing to be directly concerned about now that's that gets us through a whoops that gets us through a qualitative measurement and we can go one step further and do quantitative I was going over some stuff in videos before as far as using some meters for conductance and my new Bryman that I have some Fluke 80 series meters plus some of the older 80 series meters have a conductance function built into them as well the bench top and handheld digital multimeters in this case it's got a position here for nano siemens ohms and continuity in order to select between them you have to go through your select range until the NS is on the display which it is we're gonna let it zero now a point zero one on this is a it's it's point zero one nano siemens and conductance is the inverse of resistance mathematically and a indication of 0 0.01 would be a hundred giga ohm resistance and in this case I am going to go between the case of the capacitor the new capacitor and one of the leads This is probably sensitive to some some capacitance 
it, once you're starting to measure voltages, resistances, conductance, currents at this range, any there's a lot of outside influence that can make things make things go astray and that be a steady reading. As you can see, we're getting down to like the point zero two zero three, and even just by holding the leads in my hands. It's getting a bit of conductance. I could probably go with alligator clips on it or try to minimize my contact if anything. I think minimizing my contact on the leads works pretty well. I don't know point zero two on that one. So it's it's that's works out to fifty giga ohms. So we'll go with this capacitor. You see this one's coming up with a higher conductance value. It's not really willing to get down all the way down to that point zero two well. And steadies out at a steadying out at about a point two, which measures out to about five giga ohms. And then this capacitor. Scratch into the case a bit on it. This one is measuring out about the same. It's having some going in the common lead on this one. So it it's close to the value of a new case or just starting to get into the infancy of having an internal breakdown between the case and the capacitors, but Either one, like I said, it wasn't, at this point, there wasn't an emergency to change any of these out except for their physical condition. It's, you know, it's something you might want to take a look at, see how bad they are. If they're really rusty, if your terminals are really corroded, burnt, something, there's something you can get into changing. Also, I ended up changing the contactors on my unit, on my two units, that they were as old as the capacitors, and over time they showed some... I'm sure they had wear and tear on them between regular functioning and voltage surges and the like. It probably was not a good good thing for them to be left in place and expect everything to stay in service. So it's like I said, if you're if you're interested in examining your capacitors and your air conditioning units of something to look at. You might, you might find you have worse ones than I do, and you might actually catch a problem before it goes bad, or if you replace them, you might, stay, you might keep a problem from happening that could have been prevented. This content is available on YouTube and Odyssey.com. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. Hope you return soon.